I've been very, very lucky in uh, that I've been able to enjoy every single day of my training. So uh, I will be thinking back to the whole training time as, a, as one of the most exciting and most exhilarating of my life. I am really living the dream. During the training uh, as astronauts to fly on the space station with the Soyuz, there are two survival training experiences. One is done in the summer, possibly uh, in the hottest time of the year in Russia, and uh, it's uh, sea survival training. What we're training for is in case of uh, an emergency landing in the Soyuz uh, in the water. Uh, the other uh, kind of training is quite the opposite. It's uh, also a replica of an emergency landing, but it's an emergency landing in, uh, in a winter time uh, in an unknown area. So our survival skills are supposed to help us uh, deal with uh, being in the cold, in the snow, with only the survival equipment and survive two days before being rescued by, by the ground forces. In Russia, our training is uh, comprised of uh, two main parts. Uh, training on the Soyuz and training on the Russian segment of the space station. Now, the most substantial part is the Soyuz training. Because even though the flight on the Soyuz is really short when compared to the six months uh, of an expedition, uh, you, we use the Soyuz only to get to the station and come back from the station. It is very exciting. I am a pilot, so uh, being sitting inside the cockpit of a spacecraft and flying a spacecraft is extremely exciting and very, very realistic. The training in the Soyuz is 100% uh, realistic. Uh, we use real spacesuits uh, during our simulations, and uh, it's probably one of the most exciting. Another kind of training that is done in Houston is in the mock-ups of the space station, uh, what is normally uh, called the stack. And uh, we, use, we use these mock-ups for uh, uh, different activities. And the basic level is just to study the system and to see how it is uh, installed on the, on the space station. Yes, wonderful. Can we, can we do it now? The second level would be normal operations. What does an astronaut do every day? cleaning up or gathering instruments for a certain activity or performing an experiment, performing a physiology experiment. Where are we? How do we position ourselves? Where, how do we navigate from one place to another? The third level of training, which is probably the most complex, is the uh, emergency training. Every astronaut that lives on the space station needs to be fully capable of performing in emergency situations. One of the dreams of, I would say, every astronaut is to perform extravehicular activity. Uh, and to do that, we have to wear the, the famous EMU suit, the big white suit that uh, is so commonly seen on uh, space footage. The first time I put it on, uh, I was actually very excited uh, because the spacesuit is actually a small vehicle in itself. It has an engine, it has a life support system, um, it has uh, tools that are attached to the suit so that we can perform our tasks. So I was very excited uh, as a pilot and as a test pilot. In Houston, we train in the so-called NBL, or Neutral Buoyancy Facility. What it is, it's actually an incredibly large swimming pool, one of the biggest in the world. And underwater, we have a mock-up of the space station on a one-to-one -one scale. And some of the mock-ups are extremely realistic. Now it's only the outside because the extra vehicular activity is done on the outside of the station. So what we, they do, they put us underwater and they set a neutral, um, a neutral buoyancy, which means that uh, the suit stays uh, at whatever level in the water we are at, simulating the lack of gravity. It is probably one of the most exciting uh, training that we do um, for our flight.
training at ASC is focused on the, on the experiments that are of European nature, uh, or what, it's what we call payload training. So uh, Columbus, our European laboratory, uh, has a, a series of so-called racks, international racks, uh, that are basically individual labs for different kind of experiments. Uh, of course, we also uh, train on how to operate Columbus itself as an environment, because Columbus has its own systems, just like a, a mini spaceship that is attached to a big spaceship. And the third kind of training is on the ATV spacecraft. Even though it's fully automated, it still requires supervision from the astronauts. Because imagine, you have this uh, double-decker bus-sized spacecraft, a very big, heavy spacecraft, flying quite fast towards the space station. Uh, you don't want anything to go wrong. And so we train also on being capable of performing that duty. On the space station, I will be a flight engineer. A flight engineer is the eyes and the ears and the arms of the scientists on the ground. So what we do, we manage the experiments for the uh, international uh, scientists that on Earth have prepared these experiments to perform on the space station. That is one of the main tasks. At the same time, we have to do maintenance because the space station is actually a gigantic spacecraft that flies around the Earth at 28,000 kilometers an hour. It needs main, constant maintenance. And so that's also one of the uh, main tasks that the flight engineer has to take care of. I probably won't be very original when I say that I am extremely excited about my crewmates and I was very lucky and very privileged in uh, flying with them. Um, I will start with my commander, uh, Fyodor Yurchikin. This is his fourth flight, so you can understand that he is extremely experienced and I can only learn from him. Uh, he is one of the most experienced uh, commanders for the Soyuz. This will be his uh, third Soyuz command. It's a pleasure and an honor to, to work with him and to support him during our flight. Uh, my American crewmate, Karen Nyberg, she's like a big sister. We have a wonderful relationship. We have been training together a lot, uh, both in the NBL uh, pool or on the, on the space station mock-up. We do a lot of activities together. She's a, a very friendly, very happy, a very optimistic person with a wonderful smile and she's always ready to help. This is her second flight, so I am the only rookie on the, on the station and on the, on the flight. I like to be called a rookie because it takes a lot of pressure off my shoulder. Uh, since it's the first time for me in the space station, um, people just naturally don't have a lot of expectations. So uh, hopefully if I do everything, uh, everything well, they will be happy with my performance. And uh, if not, well, I'm just a rookie, so it's the first time and I have to learn.